Hey everyone, welcome to the EKG game. Let's get into it. All right, let's start with our first EKG of the evening here. Here we go. I'm gonna give it three, two, one. You got it? Ventricular tachycardia. So with VT, it either can have a pulse or be pulseless. But let's start with pulseless VT because it's the most common finding. So pulseless VT, pulseless ventricular tachycardia, it's hallmark, it's wide and bizarre and rapid and fast, as you can see in the screen right here, okay? And on the rhythm right here. Now, what do we do? Well, we're in cardiac arrest. It's one of the four cardiac arrest rhythms, but it is a shockable rhythm. So what are the two main things we gotta do first? Start CPR, early defibrillation. So we're gonna start CPR, give oxygen, establish the airway. We've attached the monitor. Oh, we see it's VT, shock. That's gonna be our defib. So we go ahead and do that, right. Now, now, where do we go from here after we shock? Well, now we're gonna do our two minute cycle of CPR, IVIL access. Then what are we gonna do? We're gonna continue on. Is it shockable still? Go ahead and shock it, right? If we're still on the same path, the same rhythm. And then we have things later on, like for example, epinephrine every three to five minutes, considering an advanced airway, entitled CO2. We then have, if we stay in this rhythm, and another check, we have amiodarone, we have lidocaine, and these are our doses. So amiodarone, we have 300 milligrams as our first dose. The second dose later on, if it's still in this rhythm, would be 150 milligrams. And then lidocaine, you can choose either or, Usually it's dependent on what your service actually carries. Lidocaine is one to 1.5 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. Second dose would be 0.5 to 0.75 milligrams per kilogram. Again, if this rhythm continues on your rhythm checks. The big thing with pulses VT is CPR and defibrillation. All the ALS stuff, yes, it's important, very important, but the BLS is the really, really main thing that's gonna convert this rhythm. So now let's focus on if we see this same rhythm in a patient, but they got a pulse. Well, now we gotta decide, are they stable or are they unstable? And how do we determine that? Mental status and blood pressure, okay? And also you can even include complaints, right? So let's say, this patient is stable. Oh, I feel dizzy, but they're wide awake. Put them on the monitor. You see this. Okay, what's their blood pressure? Well, their systolic's over 90. Their mapped, their mean arterial pressure's over 60. Okay, that would be a stable with a pulse VT. What do we do for that? Well, that's gonna be medication routes. That's gonna be amiodarone. 150 milligrams dripped in IV drip over 10 minutes. Now on the unstable side, let's say you have a patient who chest pain, difficulty breathing, their altered mental status, they're confused, their blood pressure under 90 systolic, under a map of 60. They're unstable, but they still got a pulse. That's unstable VTAC. We got to take action with the monitor and that is where we're gonna do a synchronized cardio version. Pretty cool. Okay, dose on that, 100 joules. Now you're gonna to wanna to stay at the end of this video. I'm gonna be working the monitor and I'm gonna show you how to actually shock the patient. Now let's go ahead to our next rhythm. Here we go. I'll give you a moment here to check it out. Here's our next rhythm, three, two, one, what do you got? Asystole. So what do we do now for asystole? With asystole, what we have to do is we have to provide high quality CPR. So we're gonna approach that patient, we see asystole, we're not gonna shock the patient. There's no shocks with asystole. It's not a shockable rhythm 
but they're in cardiac arrest and they have no pulse. So we wanna do two mid CPR cycles. We wanna give our epinephrine one milligram every three to five minutes. We wanna, of course, consider, you can go ahead and use our advanced airways. And then the main thing with asystole, and also PEA, which is in here, is the H's and T's. Look for those reversible causes. And we're gonna flow through epinephrine every three to five minutes, trying to attack those H's and T's and focusing on high quality CPR. No shocks for asystole. Now here's our next rhythm. All right, we're looking at it. What do you think? We have here ventricular fibrillation. Now this rhythm is always, without a doubt, it's always pulseless. This rhythm, also known as VF, ventricular fibrillation, it never has a pulse. It's always pulseless. This is always cardiac arrest, which makes it easier to remember because there's only really one pathway. High quality CPR, and we gotta shock it. Meaning, what's shock mean? We need to fibrillate it, an unsynchronized shock. Okay, now let's roll through a scenario. Go to a patient, unresponsive, not breathing, no pulse, put them on the monitor, see this. What do we do? Start CPR, start to manage an airway, give oxygen, right? We're already on the monitor, we see that. We're gonna start our CPR. What are we gonna do? Most important thing, shock it. That's the first step. It's the shockable rhythm to one of the four cardiac arrest rhythms, but it's one of the two that are shockable, VF. The other one we already went over earlier in the video, that was VT, pulses VT, right? Now the pathway and the treatment is the exact same. Rolling through the algorithm is gonna be two minute CPR cycles, as long as this rhythm continues, it's gonna be basically as follows. Getting IVIL access, two minute cycles, continuing on. Epinephrine, every three to five minutes. Considering an advanced airway, antidote CO2. Two, again, rhythm check. Still shockable. Keep shocking as we go along, right? As long as we see this rhythm, every rhythm check, we're gonna keep shocking the patient. And then continuing two minute CPR cycles. Then obviously if they stay in this rhythm, we get to that point in the algorithm, we have, we have an option. What does your EMS service carry? They carry amiodarone or lidocaine, okay? So amiodarone, first dose, 300. If it shows up again later on in another rhythm check, you have second dose of 150. Lidocaine, one to 1 1.5 milligrams per kilogram, first dose. Second dose, VF shows its head later on, 0 0.5 to 0 0.75 milligram per kilogram. And that is what we look at here with the shockable rhythm of VF. All right, now you're ready for the fun. Let me show you how to actually defib and synchronize cardiovert different rhythms. So I'm gonna keep on the screen here VF because we have to defibrillate it. It's an unsynchronized shock. Let me show you how we do it. Let me put my little simulator down here and here we go. Okay, we're in VF. We're doing CPR right now. We're gonna charge the monitor. The big pearl I wanna give you with CPR, minimize your interruptions. You wanna have the compressor, continuing compressions until that moment where you're actually gonna press a shock button and they're gonna hover over the patient, not touching the patient. So as soon as you shock and it's delivered, right back down the chest. That's a big pearl. So here's what we gotta do. First, we energy select. We're at 200, perfect, let's stay right there. Now we're gonna charge the monitor. Continuing compression that we're charging. That's totally okay to do, okay? Now, now we're ready to shock. Everybody clear, I'm clear, everybody clear, and shocking, they're off. The shocks have been delivered, it's gonna print out. Now we're right back to CPR. That's how we do it. All right, let's do it again. But now we got a rhythm change. Now your patient has a pulse, but they're unstable. You see this rhythm, what is it? Ventricular tachycardia, but you feel the pulse, but they're confused. Their blood pressure is hypotensive. Their MAP is low. Their mean arterial pressure, stalactin are 90. They're confused. We got to act. What do we do? We have to provide a synchronized cardioversion. Well, let's go ahead and do that. 
So there's a difference here. So remember, the big pearl with synchronized cardio version, what is it? We only synchronize cardio patients who have a pulse. The patient has no pulse. If this VTAC was a cardiac arrest VTAC, we'd be doing the same thing we just did to that VF. But this patient here's got a pulse. So we gotta do something different. It's called the sync button. So watch this, I hit the sync button first, okay? When I hit the sync button here, see how it's, it's putting these little triangles on top of the QRS complex. Now, when I see it all across the screen, as I can see here, now I know that it is in sync mode. I can now provide a synchronized cardioversion. Now we know we got the, the energy we want here is 100 joules. So I gotta change my energy selection and move it down to 100 joules, okay? Now I'm gonna charge the monitor, okay? We're charging, and now we can go ahead, tell the patient they're gonna feel a little bit of jolt. Everybody clear? Shocking. And same deal. By clicking in the first link in the description, you get lifetime access to my Video Vault program. The Video Vault includes over 480 videos of content and now holds over 2,000 national registry practice test questions. Also include some really awesome bonuses like worksheets, drug cards that are pre-filled out all for you, community group access to ask me questions, and audio files when you are on the go. The Video Vault will find you no matter where you're at, whether you're an EMR, EMT, advanced EMT, or paramedic student, and my students use this whether you are getting ready for school, in school right now, or getting ready to go pass your national registry exams. So click the first link in the description right now and get yourself lifetime access to the Video Vault today. I'll see you there.